Hi everybody, we got something very exciting on the Armory TV today. So today we are at H. Moser C in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, and we are joined by Edouard Malin, um, who's the co-CEO of H. Moser C. Thank you for coming. Thanks for joining us. Um, we have a pretty exciting project on the table, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. So we made these. It took a while, though. It took a while, but we finally made these. Um, this is the Armory and H. Moser's collaboration uh, called the Total Clips. And uh, we've released a couple of videos already, and you might have seen some of the photos uh, on social media. Uh, but you know, I, I felt like I wanted everybody to get, a, get to know H. Moser as a company a bit better, and I wanted them to kind of understand Edouard's vision uh, for the company a little bit, a bit better, too. So um, Edouard, can you explain a little bit about the history of H. Moser and C? Because it's been around for a long time, right? Do you have time? I have very much time. <laughs> Uh, H. Moser is, is a rather old brand, actually. It's, um, it was created in uh, 1828, founded in 1828 in Schaffhausen by um, Mr. Moser, mm -hmm. the family of watchmakers from the town of Schaffhausen. We visited today, yeah. you saw the museum, yeah. beautiful museum that we have here in the original castle of mm -hmm. Mr. Moser. Their family, Moser, was taking care of the clocks. They were really the town watchmakers. There was this tradition you would inherit the title of watchmakers. Mm. And uh, Heinrich was fifth generation, created his brand, became very successful in his lifetime. He produced about 500,000 watches, not alone. He had a big manufacturer with about 350 people. The life of uh, the brand went until the 1980s. It changed hands a few times, always different families. In the 1980s, the quartz crisis, there was, uh, the brand struggled uh, for about 20 years until it was relaunched by the great-grandson of Heinrich Moser with other entrepreneurs. Um, it was uh, Roger Nicholas Balziger. Uh, in 2005, and I had the opportunity with my family to acquire Moser in 2012, mm -hmm. and I've been running uh, since then the, the brand. Here in Schaffhausen, we have today about 70 people around the world, mostly here. I mean, right. We have a subsidiary in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. we have uh, somebody in, in Dubai, somebody in, um, in uh, New York. Um, I work with my brother, he's uh, taking care of the subsidiaries, so he's uh, based in Dubai and manage Hong Kong, New York, and, uh, and Dubai. And what do we do? We make about 1,500 watches per year. Mm -hmm. um, we're very integrated. You've seen that. We, have, um, we do everything inside the movements, pretty much, uh, from the hairspring, which we even supply to other brands. Yeah. We do the bridges, we do the main plates, we do uh, the small gold screws on our, on mm -hmm. our watches. We develop movements. We have about 18 movements in our portfolio that we created in the last 12 years. Um, and we're constantly uh, innovating, trying new things, trying to keep Moser a little bit to be a sexy yet very traditional brand. Yeah. That's kind of what we want to be, you know. Yeah. Get, you know, continue to keep the roots into tradition of watchmaking, but at the mm. same time stay stay alive and uh, align with the current mm. trends and anticipate them sometimes if we can. You know, this is like new horizons. Like this is one aspect of Moser that I wanted to just discuss with you a little bit further, like hear a little bit more from you. Um, Moser is really interesting in that I think it's very forward-looking. I think it's willing to take a lot of risks. Um, and in fact, I think it's also willing to kind of weather a little bit of criticism early on in its projects because they're sometimes they're like quite avant-garde yeah. uh, for, you know, potentially a much better payoff further down the line. I think it's an approach that has really worked for you. And I think it's an approach that really like comes from you personally, too. Well, I think it's it's not just me. I think if you if you are a small brand and you're you you, you have to take risks. You have mm -hmm. to be different. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started, a lot of the products that we had were very similar to what other brands, like some of the major brands, were were doing. And my analysis analysis at that time was, you know, everybody is telling me they like Moser, but mm -hmm. they're not successful. Why? And I think that time a lot of people were buying the brands because mm -hmm. the name is important. You need to show a certain status, and for that amount of money, you want to have something major behind it. Sure. 
So we tried really to find our way. So we said, no, we don't want to be a wannabe. Mm. We want to be to have our own identity, to stand out. We don't need to please everyone. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, I mean, we tra we're producing 1,500 watches mm -hmm. a year. That's what I need to sell. Yeah. So I need to find those special people who will understand and appreciate what we do. Mm -hmm. I don't need to please everyone. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would copy Rolex. Mm -hmm. But there's enough of what they do, and there's tons of amazing brands out there. We want to create something that adds value to this industry. And that's why we started trying to a little bit break the rules, break the codes, try things, burn our fingers sometimes, uh, but definitely not... Um, I mean, we wanted to create product that you know people react to. Either yeah. they love them or they hate them. Yeah. I don't want people to like our product. I yeah. want them to love them. Yeah. And because if you just like it, you're not going to spend you know, 20, 30. It's a huge amount of money for, uh, for those kind of products. You need to love the details, to understand the philosophy, the people, and all those things. So there's no compromise. We mm. go all in there. That's wonderful. I mean, I love it. I, I, you know, I've always admired Moser. Like, I've always liked what they do. Like I've always liked your products. Um, there's so many interesting kind of design details that are sort of uh, iconic to Moser, right? Things like the Fumé dial, things like the Vantablack dial. Uh, and then we met because uh, you and I were doing like a podcast yeah. thing yeah. at the Armory Westbury with Blamo. And um, it was fun. Like we had a good time. That was a super interesting podcast. Check it out. It's on Blamo. Um, and uh, I guess I just kind of asked. And you were like open to it, which was great. No, it was fun. I think yeah. uh, we had a great discussion. Um, collaboration is about people at the mm -hmm. end of the day, right? It's a process. Yeah. Well, of course, there's a result. Like that's the baby that comes to life. But I think it's it's like those discussions, the process of learning from each other, and and having certain values in common. Yeah, and I think that's what what I felt yeah. back then. When was it? 2019. It was just before the lockdown, no? Yeah. So 20, 2020? Can't remember. Yeah, two, 2020. Two 2020. It was it was the last event. Yeah. It must have been one of the last, last events in the world. <laughs> yeah. Right before yeah. the lockdown. It was crazy. It was February 2020. Right. Yeah. And but you're then, right. Like collaborations always, you know, collaborations do best when it's two groups of people who get along and have and have similar values or shared values, um, but also can bring something new to the table for each side. That's what I, I find interesting. That's the first time we we collaborate with people or brand that are outside our world, mm. uh, but still have an affinity for the, the, the beauty of and, and the craftsmanship of our products. And mm. we did collaborations in the past, like with MBNF, for example, which was brand with brand and worked yeah. very well because we were very different brands. Yeah. But I think more and more, I, 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 from that day onwards, I said, next time we need to do something which is outside our industry mm. because there's so much we can learn from, from others. Yeah. I'm um, super happy we did it with the armory. Actually, I really like the one. Oh, thank you for saying that. But <laughs> I really like the ones that you do with Scon Scon as well. Like, do you oh, yeah. consider him someone in the yeah. industry or not? Well, yeah, he's more of an artist. I mean, if you work with uh, with Scon Scon, he's he's a guy who lives in a different world. So, I don't know if I can consider him in any industry. To be honest, he's more <laughs> of an artist. You know. Yeah. You know, you cannot put the catalog behind those okay. people. Okay. Well, listen, we'll show a little bit of those watches uh, in a second. But let's um, let's jump back into the um, into the total clips. So, if you haven't seen it already, I will just quickly introduce what the total clips is. The total clips is a Vanta black dial uh, that has been surrounded by a polished inner bezel, and we call it the total clips because it's based on the phenomenon of a total solar eclipse. You know, a total solar eclipse is the only time you can actually look at the sun and uh, you can actually see the corona, the halo, the fiery halo around the sun. And uh, you know it's something that you can't normally see to the naked eye because the sun itself is too bright. Um, and so we wanted to recreate that effect uh, in the metal, you know, using watches. And Vanta Black was such a great place to start. Uh, and you know, in the end, we made two versions. So we made the steel on steel, and then we also made the steel on rose. Um, and you know, I would love to hear from you guys in the comments uh, what you prefer because it's quite interesting to see who prefers what watch. Like, what do you prefer of these two? I had the first phase where you know I'm a very I'm a very traditional white gold type of person. So mm. when you, when we did, when we designed it, remember I told you like mm, I'm not sure about the combination uh, uh, steel uh, rose gold mm. and and also the the inner bezel polished like this. And to be honest, these are the two features I love. So <laughs> right now I'm 200% on the on the oh, steel nice. rose gold. <laughs> I'm gonna be fight, fighting with my brother. Huh. I think so I'll leave that to you. I, 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 don't, I think he's getting for, he's going for the other one. Oh, is he? That's good. Okay. Okay. I will have one of both in the family. Oh, nice. No, but I, I love it. And I, I think the story uh, about the total eclipse and, and the way that was the base and then to build the product around that idea is very visionary to me. And that's not the way we work usually. Right. It's the other way around. You know, usually you, you build a product and then you, you find a name in the, in the story. You know, yeah. here I, what I liked is that you had an idea, you had a concept, 
and you made it, or we contributed to a... Uh, oh, definitely, we couldn't have made it without you, that's for sure. I mean, that's the beauty of collaborations, right? Of course. So it's always something that you couldn't have come up with yourself. Of course, yeah. and that's, that's the idea. I mean, Mo Moser provides a Canva, and then you express yourself. And yeah. we try, I hope it was like this, uh, that to leave as much freedom as possible, because I think that's the... the it, it has to be a lot about the others. Yeah. And, um, I mean, we used to make watches, and we have our DNA, etc. And if a collaboration is too much us saying, "Oh, be careful! This is not Moser. This is not Moser." Yeah. Then what's the point? Yeah. Then I can do my watches on my side. Yeah. So that's what I liked about it because you you helped us explore new things, and the result is is amazing. Yet is pushing the boundaries of Moser. Yeah, that's actually a very important part of like our own mindset when we approach these collaborations. Is like it's really important to be respectful of like the brand's existing catalog, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're not trying to ape existing models. You're not trying to like, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel for them. You're really just reinterpreting their balance, rules. Though. It's a fine balance. And uh, oftentimes what we find when we're doing these collab designs is that um, the best designs are the ones that are really, really difficult to deconstruct. As in like everything, all the elements of the design hang so, so well that the minute you start to touch one thing, you've mm. actually broken the entire thing. So it's not like you can take, you know, an existing design and just, oh, I'll just change the hands and that's it. Like it never works, right? You have to really like deconstruct it down to like what are the themes of this design and then try to like rebuild it with your own themes but then being respectful of the original framework of the design, which I, you know, I, I don't want to be arrogant about it, but I think we did okay on this one. I, I really am super happy with this one. Well, I'm, I'm definitely happy, but... How, how different is, I mean, you, you, you had many collaborations with other, uh, not watchmakers, but how different is it to work with watchmakers like us? I mean, from a process, from, you know, That's so kind funny. of playing with a product like this one, comparison with garments and stuff. You know, it's a funny question. Um, not that different. No? Not that different. Craftsmen are the same. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, people who like to make things, industry. yeah, right? Like people who like to make things yeah. tend to have People like to make things, just want to make things. And if they really, really love making things and they really like the people they're working with, yeah. then they'll just go along with it. Of and course. that kind of is what it comes down to. It's funny because the entire process went through Zoom and, and yeah, pretty much all online, right? Yeah. We, we sent you prototypes, etc. but you never yeah. actually met my team until no. No. you came here. Yeah. So <laughs> what's, what, how, how do you feel? I mean, you met Rafi, you met Maurizio, you met Martina, you met all the people who actually made it happen. I, I was just, you know, facilitator. So did you expect those kind of people? Or? You know, that's a great question. I don't, I never really thought about it. As in, I, I don't think what I, I don't think what we designed would have changed because we met those people, because we interacted and we worked together perfectly yeah. fine over Zoom. I think if anything though, it probably would have taken a little bit longer <laughs> just because we would have enjoyed like all the various chats and, and you never know. Maybe it would have also given us a few ideas that in the metal, in the per in person, you might come up with that you wouldn't yeah. necessarily come up with virtually. Um, but I guess luckily, because like the concept of what we want to do is pretty strong from the beginning, so we didn't really need to like explore that many avenues once we had the concept down. And at the same time, we have we have very different characters in the team. Mm -hmm. We have people like Rafi who will be like, okay, how do you optimize? How do you make sure this mm -hmm. is reliable? How do you make sure there's no risk with this mm -hmm. watch? And he, you know how he talks about yeah. the Vantab, like the tools he developed to yeah. assemble all those things. And then you have yeah. people more towards like the artistic, oh, and we could do this and we could do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we have a good mix of people to, um, to kind of bring you to the result. Of. Yeah. Well, I think at the end of the day, the, the, the attitude of everybody is can do, yeah. right? I, I don't well, think that's we, the mentality. Well, I don't think we ever heard like, no, you know? They might say in the beginning, they oh, when you say, okay, yeah. they like the challenge. <laughs> it's <laughs> tough. show the head of development and production is like this. It's, every time he says no and we know it's going to happen, it's going to make it happen. <laughs> It's become oh, a man. joke inter internally. I'm like, yeah, yeah, just say no, it's fine. Aww, that's just tell us when. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, um, so if you want to see more of the watch, uh, we have built a little landing page with a lot more images and tell the story a little bit better. We also produce a really great little short video, um, just really giving you like a close macro look at the watch. And then uh, Edouard and I are going to shoot a video talking more about like the technical aspects of making this watch. And I think that one will be pretty interesting for anyone who's interested in how watches are made and put together and sort of things you think about. So, um, Edouard, thank you for your time. Really thank appreciate it. And uh, let's do a couple more programs after oh, this. Definitely. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Watching,